it's finally here. Studio Tour 2024. Let's go. As far as guitars go, I'm just going to kind of knock them out one by one. I have a lot. So I'm going to do just a general overview. And if you have any more questions about specifics or particulars, let me know and I'll answer however I can. This is a Gopher Wood 620 CE. And this thing is amazing. This is a beautiful acoustic. It sits somewhere between tone and feel between a Taylor and a Martin. Uh, not quite a Gibson either, but somewhere between all of them. It, in my opinion, it takes the best features of all of them. And it kind of combines them into one. This is my USA Core PRS CE22. This is back when the Bolton Next, when the CE series was actually a core model. And this is a 96, I think. Um, so it has a painted headstock and just a really comfy neck. It's an absolutely beautiful guitar. The top on this is carved just like the, the core models are now and just like everything else. Um, and it feels different. Like I've played tons of CE24s and, and different kinds of CEs. This one is not the same thing. <laughs> this one is absolutely amazing. Uh, they're not super costly. So if you need, if you want like a core PRS but don't have core PRS money, I absolutely recommend getting one of these. This is my 2013 Gibson Les Paul Traditional, and it's an absolutely amazing workhorse of a guitar. Uh, it's got the Bigsby, it's got a Super 57 in the bridge, a Gibson, and a bare knuckle HSP90 in the neck. I just put this in uh, this week. Uh, Obsidian wiring harness, like all my guitars, and a Bigsby, and it's amazing. <laughs> This is a custom Telecaster. Uh, it's made by Warmoth, and I actually got it on Craigslist and refinished the whole thing with my father-in-law before he passed. And it has sure pickups in it. Um, it has a all rosewood neck, uh, an ebony fretboard, locking tuners. Um, this does not have an obsidian wiring harness because it's a custom wiring job. Um, just I can split anything, push pull, American strap trim. This is my number one guitar. If I need tones, if I need something that does it all, this is it. It's actually a short scale Gibson neck too. Uh, so it's a different scale length and it's just just an absolute beast of a guitar. A Fender Strat is just the Swiss Army knife as far as guitars go. It does everything and anything you need it to do. And this one covers a lot of ground for me. Uh, I find myself using this probably more often than not. It has an obsidian wiring harness in it. It has uh, a JB in the bridge. I'm swapping this out for the bare knuckle HSP90, the Stockholm, the, the bridge of that Gibson Les Paul. Um, it's the bridge one though. I'm going to swap that out shortly. His neck and middle are Shure ML60s. Um, the neck is just standard neck. I have like a fret inlay kind of thing on it. Locking tuners. It's just a beast of a guitar. It's a like purple color. You can't really tell, but it's just a beast of a guitar. Um, nothing too much about it. Nothing too fancy. This is the working man's guitar right here. I tell you what. <laughs> and this one is an absolute beast. Uh, this is another Fender Strap, but this is actually a baritone. So it actually has a different scale length. It's longer. And it just has an absolutely beefy tone to it. Um, it's tuned to B standard. Uh, sometimes I'll go down to B flat or A standard. And it just, it's an absolute workhorse. I need to get some new knobs for it. Uh, some switch tips and stuff like that. Um, I need to set it up. I have a couple things I need to touch up as far as uh, nut filing and getting, just getting it set up. Um, so I haven't had a chance to get to that because I've been so busy lately. But it's just a functional guitar. I finished this one as well. Did like a Jurassic Park kind of theme. Um, but I put the strap button right in the back. It's just more comfortable. I had an old Gibson that had that, uh, my 92 M3, uh, and I just loved it. So I did it to this one too, uh, because the neck plate was in a certain way. Um, but I absolutely love this guitar. It's been really, really cool. This is a seven string Ibanez RG7421. And it's not too crazy of a guitar, but what's nice is that it has the Seymour Duncan Sentient and Nazgul pickups in it. I got it in a trade about a month or two ago, and I absolutely love it. It has a couple of marks on it, but they are they come off. They're just like, had some stickers on it, and I had to clean it up. But anyways, it's a uh, just a seven string, and if I need something different or something just very, uh, I need to hit something a little bit lower than I would uh, without having to use any software or programming or pedals, I can just kind of do it with this. Um, if I need some inspiration for a different feel of a song, sometimes I'll grab this. And I've been able to do either something a little bit more jazzy, because I can change the bass note. I can do something a little more heavy. I can do something just a little bit different, and kind of just takes you to a different place mentally. So it's pretty cool. This is like worship guitar in like a box. Like literally, just worship guitar in a box. This is a D'Angelico Deluxe 175 CE. And this is essentially a Gretsch White Falcon. 
uh, when I say it has like the TV Jones pickups in it, which again, I, I may swap these out at some point. Um, it has a super great Bigsby locking tuners. Um, just an amazing workhorse of a guitar. I love this thing. If I need something for like a CCM artist or a client and I want something CCM, this is the guitar I'm going to bring out 99% of the time. Uh, not so much for gospel or anything else like that, which I, it could, but this is more for like the CCM tones, um, just to get something that has a little more clarity to it, that has a little more bite to it. It just sounds a little different, and it's because of the filter trons. The filter trons do make a big difference there compared to a humbucker and a P90 or a single coil. It's just absolutely different than everything else, and like everything else, it's a tool. Um, I don't like to have repeats of guitars, so you notice all my guitars have been different so far, and I like it that way. I like that everything's different. I like that everything has a individual purpose. I don't like having stuff just to have stuff. And it's a huge help when you're trying to work on something you need that's something a little bit different. This is amazing. This is my Fender five string jazz bass. And I use this, if I need anything bass related, I play a ton of bass, at least live or for a lot of clients. I do every once in a while, but I really don't need a ton of basses. That's why I have mostly guitars. But this has been absolutely amazing to have. I need something, again, that Swiss Army knife, that Fender is, just absolutely translates super well to the bass. Uh, I can run this through my Helix or anything else, and it just sounds super amazing. This is my Fender Tele that I'm building right now. It's a custom build that I started from absolute scratch, and it's coming out amazing. I can't give you a ton of details on it just yet, but I did this. I finished everything. Uh, not exactly perfect. I kind of botched a couple spots, but it looks absolutely amazing. Feels absolutely amazing. I still need to wire everything up. I have the harness in there. I got to put the tuners on, some strings, set it up. It's going to be a little bit before this is done but I'm hoping to have it done in the next month or so and it'll be absolutely amazing. So I think it came out pretty good. I restained it about six times, so that's why it took so long. Um, but it is, it's gonna be really cool. As far as guitars go, it depends what I'm doing. If I'm running live stuff, I'm using my Line 6 Helix and sometimes I'm running auxiliary pedals, which you'll see right here. They actually got come on this cool slide out shelf that I built in here. And it's just, I have a Deep Six, and Ages, Eras, a Voyager, a Warhorn, and a Kingra. Sometimes I'll swap out that Deep Six with a Mira if I need a different kind of uh, compression on my guitar, depending on what I'm doing. But I'll run these. Sometimes I'll swap out other pedals in here just to get a different sound or do a demo. Uh, but this is my main setup. And the reason I have it set up this way is I think that the areas that digital modeling does really well is all the reverbs and delays, but not so much in the form of compression. Uh, to me, the compressors in modelers just don't quite sound natural. To me, a lot of the compressors fall short, and you kind of have to use them in ways you wouldn't normally use a compressor. This allows me to send this into the front of my signal chain. So if I send this into my DAW, I get exactly what I'm looking for. If I send this into the front of my Helix, I get exactly what I'm looking for because the drives and the compression a lot of times in Helix or Kemper or uh, Quad Cortex just don't feel as organic as you like. They sound good. They just don't feel like your favorite pedals. So why not just throw a couple of your favorite drives and I keep a drive section if I go on tour or I need to fly rig, sometimes I'll take one or two of these and I'll kind of just take whatever I need uh, to give me those stages of drives and I'll put them with my Helix. The other part of that is if I'm in the studio, I can just leave this hooked up and then I can get a physical tactile control on whatever I want to do. So I basically run into this and then I run out of it back into my audio interface, which is my Universal Audio Apollo, and I run into there, and then I treat it just like I would my Helix, except I run Helix native inside of Ableton or Logic. So basically I take these compressors and these drives, and I run them into my Universal Apollo, and then I can control my cabs or my delay or reverb, which often eat up a ton of DSP. Well, you don't have a limit on your computer, so that allows me to do some things I wouldn't normally be able to do. Uh, it saves me a lot of time and a lot of money and a lot of effort of having to do all those externally and then mic it up. As far as pianos go, I have my M Audio Oxygen 61 Pro, and this is what I'm using these days for a second synth or a top synth, um, where it only gives me my VST sounds. As far as VSTs, I'm running Omnisphere, Keyscape, and Trillion uh, through Ableton Live, and it gives me everything I need. For studio stuff, I'm typically using Logic, um, and that's just because I like the interface. I think that Ableton is easily the ugliest DAW, and Logic is probably the prettiest one. <laughs> I know that's such a weird take on that, but that's how I feel about it. Um, as far as uh, main pianos go, I use my Yamaha MOX8, and I use just the piano sound out of that. Uh, there's not a whole lot else I use from that, except for the actual just piano sound, 
and I like that it can control everything and it works as an audio interface. So my Motif uh, XS8 or ES8, you cannot use it as an audio interface. But on the MOX8, you can use it as an audio interface, which is crazy. So I can run all my Omnisphere and my VSTs and Ableton and I can run it all through that and send it out through there. Out through there, I send the outputs out of that into dual compressors, into Walrus Audio, Mira optical compressors, and those things just sing. They take everything and they just bring it all together. Sometimes I have delay, modulation, reverb, a couple other things that I want to run on the end of that on my pedal board for my keyboard. Uh, sometimes I'll run it through my Helix on top of that just to, in case I need something uh, to get a different sound out of it. But for the most part, this is what my setup looks like. And it is absolutely amazing. It makes a $1,000 piano and a $1,000 worth of synths sound like $20,000 worth of gear. <laughs> and, and it really is. It just does an amazing job of doing everything I need it to at least. You might have a different setup. You may like all analog gear. You may like all software and all VSTs. I like a combination of both because I feel like it gives me the best possible sound. Inside here, I actually... If I cannot drop this. <laughs> I actually have uh, my pair of in-ears. They're all clear. Spires and these are six drivers on a side. I have them custom molded. You can't really There we go. You can see them now. There are six drivers on a side and they are just amazing in ears I got them custom molded from all clear uh, in Nashville. I highly advise going in I have my ears molded at an audiologist I'm not gonna say which place and I just think that they did a terrible job uh, But when I went to all clear and had it redone a year later Absolutely perfect. The inner sounded better than they ever had and I was just totally just blown away with how much better the same in ear sounded a year later. I think it's always great to have some things inside your studio that make you feel like home or make it feel like your space. I have some posters on the wall. I have some Star Wars action figures. If you know me, I, you know I love, I'm a nerd. Is it long story short? I'm a nerd. Uh, I love Star Wars and Jurassic Park and Lord of the Rings and sci-fi. And I'm just an absolute total nerd when it comes down to it. Um, but those things have actually become super cool for me because those same toys my daughter now plays with when she comes to the studio with me or she's hanging out here for the day. My daughter's two, almost three, and she absolutely just loves to play with those Star Wars characters. That's the first thing she wants to do when she comes in here between that and, and banging on my keyboards and throwing my guitars around. Um, she absolutely just wants to play with those toys and it just really feels like home. Also, if you didn't notice the massive TV uh, that's there, it's an 86 inch LG. Uh, 4k TV and I use it as an LED wall uh, sometimes I'll put like a Star Wars biome or something else so I can feel like I have a window in here because I have no window um, I got a good deal on it from a buddy of mine at church and I didn't want to put it near my toddler so it ended up in here and it's on this cool rolling stand I can use it for presentations and stuff like that but it has been absolutely really cool to have so there's that <laughs> As far as screens go, I have two of these Samsung SJ, uh, I think they're like 45, whatever they are. They're 34 inch monitors, ultra widescreen. I don't know all the specs on it. All I know is I have two of them. I stack them right behind each other with a pull mount and they look absolutely amazing. I have them calibrated, so they work really well with video editing software or color grading. They do actually do a really good job. So I'm really impressed with this setup and I absolutely love it. As far as monitors go, I use a pair of a Yamaha HS5s and a pair of Mackie CRX3s, uh, I think. I think they're the three inch models. And I basically use the fives for like mostly everything. I also have a JBL 310S underneath. And I use that sub and the fives to give me most of my tones. But if I need to see how something's gonna mix and for a mobile device like a laptop or a phone, I use the top ones and I'll kind of AB them with my Mackie uh, big knob controller. And what that allows me to do is just see how things are going to mix differently. And if I want to, if I need to blend them to see how it's going to sound like all together, I can do that too. Um, but it does a really great job as far as bringing it all together. So as far as computers go, I run an M1 MacBook Air. And I actually love this computer because it has 16 gigs of RAM. It has two terabytes of storage inside. And it just does everything I need it to do. I have a couple hubs that I run underneath and they allow me to split screens to get more than one screen, which M1 Max cannot do natively. So it allows me to do that. It allows me to get all my USB stuff plugged in and it just, those hubs really just beef up that Mac so much. I also have an iPad Pro. I think it's a 12.9 inch that I use for running a lot of multi-tracks or I use to uh, control lighting or software or DAWs. And that's my other workhorse thing. I take that thing with me everywhere because I use it so much.
it's an absolute just just the combination of both of those amazing i have an amp that started its life as a pv valve king and you're like oh it hurts it's a 40 watt 6l6 based amp and i only use the fx return into there so i bypass the preamp and i just run whatever my preamps are for my helix into that and then i use it for basically the cabs uh and everything and the, just a little bit of the power to warmth that you get from there from the saturation i do that and then i'll mic that up sometimes if i need a different feel or different tone uh, and it has a super rare English Marshall speaker in the back. Uh, it's like a $400 speaker and it came with the amp when I got it. And the guy had told me it was nice, but he didn't know exactly how nice. Uh, and I think I got the whole amp for like 200 bucks. <laughs> it didn't need anything. I just had a fresh set of tubes and everything, I think. Um, but it's really, really been awesome. As far as mics go, I'm building out my mic locker right now. And so I have the SM57s, the SM58s. I have some PG81s. I have, a, you name it, I probably have the most random mics. But the ones I find myself using a lot right now are from Aston microphones. I find myself using the Aston Element, and I find myself using the Aston Stealth. I just got that one this last week. And those two mics have just blown me away with how good they sound, and especially at the price point. I just mean, they are absolutely amazing for what they are and what they do. Oh my goodness, they just have blown me away time and time again. So I advise you go into your guitar center and check it out. You'll find them for like 50 to like 80% off. Like no kidding, like 50 to 80% off of what they list for even online at Guitar Center. So go in your store, check out their mic section or their clearance section. Sometimes they'll have them in there because they don't move the same way that a Neumann does, but they feel so much like a much more expensive mic. These three lights are all newer lights. One is a 150 watt, I believe, or 100 watt. Uh, this is a 60 watt. And this is a 60 watt RGB in the back. So I can control that one uh, with a, an app uh, or on the back of the device. I can kind of just tap it and say green or I can say uh, blue to match whatever color I have back there, red. I like the teal and orange kind of look and it helps me out a lot as far as like color grading. So it looks really, really nice and comes all together. Uh, for LUTs, I use Jason Morris LUTs. Uh, his LUTs are beyond the best. As far as Sony color grading and like the color science that there is there, he does an absolutely phenomenal job, and I, I absolutely it was the, some of the best money I've ever spent are were on his LUTs. As far as the camera setup, it's pretty basic. Here I have a Sony XYST1M as a mic. This is pretty cool because it goes to stereo. So if you're recording music or you need something real particular, it'll absolutely get a full stereo image. And this is really this is like secret sauce. Uh, then over here I have a Sony A7 IV. Um, right now I have a 35 millimeter 1.4 on it and I have a small rig matte box pro uh, This is really nice for blocking some of these higher lights that come here or the TV um, Or anything else. It's just external lights. That's really nice. I also have a 1 8 uh, black mist filter on the inside of it uh, and for as far as filters go and then I also have a ND filter just a variable ND in the back. I have a Feel world monitor it's just a seven inch monitor just super basic um and then back there you can kind of see i just kind of have it just a cage on it mounting a couple of other things with an arca swiss mount to a desk mount um so it's pretty basic the way it's set up and this boom arm i swap it out for a regular mic sometimes and it just depends what i'm doing um that's pretty much it so there's a lot of stuff uh, if you haven't noticed um when you work in a studio space this small to fit like this amount of stuff inside of a 10 by 10 room is extremely challenging. In fact, like they make fun of me uh, because every six months I kind of move my desk in a different area, different arrangement. I like moving just because it gives me a little bit of inspiration, uh, just different views. I don't have a window in here, so I kind of have to like do makeshift windows and stuff like that. I'll turn like my screen to just a, a drone of like a six hour uh, raining window, cityscape, something, maybe something with nature, like out in a field or something, just so it feels like I'm outdoors. Um, and it really does help me a lot from getting like stir crazy and cramped up and cooped. So my plan for this was not to make anything very long, but instead just to give you a general idea of what I have. And if you guys have any questions, you can shoot me a DM or comment on the video below. And I would love to answer whatever questions you guys have. Um, I know it's hard to like cram everything in one video without like doing like a 30 minute format. So just let me know, uh, all the engagement in the comments and the likes and the shares and stuff help. Uh, just let me know, uh, make sure to like, follow, comment below, and it really helps me out a lot. Thanks guys.